Yuji Itadori is the main character from the popular battle shonen we all love, Jujutsu Kaisen. But as of recent chapters, Yuji seems to be in the simplest way to put it, falling behind the curve. Many other YouTubers have done videos similar to this one, and it's been an ongoing topic in the space for quite some time. Because of that, I would like to give my thoughts. Does Yuji Itadori need an awakening in order to keep up? If you enjoy Jujutsu Kaisen content, please leave a like and subscribe, and comment on some video ideas you want to see be done on the channel down below. First, obviously we should go over what do I mean by awakening. Throughout Jujutsu Kaisen, in, characters have received these power-ups in order to contend the odds and stay above the curve of strength and relevance. Ever since the near beginning of the series, we've seen this happen to even some of the main characters. In one of Gege Akutami's interviews done and released in the fan book, Gege basically says that after Goodwill, Yuji's Black Flash pulled him ahead of Megami. But instead of giving Megami a Black Flash, Gege instead chose to give him his own domain expansion. We've seen Yuji himself receive one of these power-ups before. Four, like we just mentioned, his most renowned boost is his Black Flash. The Black Flash is a distortion in space that occurs when cursed energy is applied at the near last second of an attack, making physical contact with the opponent. Landing a Black Flash makes the attack equal to the normal attack's power to the power of 2.5. On top of this, the Black Flash gives an immeasurably higher understanding of cursed energy when compared to somebody who has never used it. It puts them in a state similar to being in the zone, and this leads to greatly increased performance in combat. And after Yuji, Toto, and Maito all land Black Flash, they unlock 100. 20% of their own potential. Although Yuji out of all the characters in this series is the most consistent with landing a Black Flash, the obvious downside to this game changing move is that nobody can use the Black Flash at will, even Yuji. Currently as of chapter 219, Yuji has not used the Black Flash since his fight with Mahito all the way back in chapter 132. While Black Flash is an extremely strong move, it can't be controlled, making it unreliable. Since the beginning of the series, Yuji has been hyped as a sorcerer with an insane amount of potential. Back when Yuji died in the beginning of the story when Sakuna ripped out his heart, his body was brought to the morgue where Gojo and Ijichi sat and waited for Shoko. When Gojo is sitting with Ijichi mourning his loss, he tells him about a dream he has. He tells Ijichi that he wants to reset the world of Jujutsu. His way of doing this is by training his students and fostering rookie sorcerers into strong allies. He says that Yuta and Akari are especially strong students and one day they'll surpass Gojo himself. And Yuji was no exception. Yuji's most apparent skill throughout the entire series is his extremely impressive natural physical power. Even all the way back in chapter 1, Yuji plays a game called Shot Put with the gym coach Mr. Takashi. Although Mr. Takagi was able to throw the ball an impressive 14 meters, Yuji outdoes his shot, landing the ball about 30 meters away and even denting the goalpost. This even impresses an onlooking Megami who's out looking for a cursed object. Megami remarks how impressive it is making a shot like that with just natural physical ability without the use of cursed energy. He also begins to question if Yuji received a heavenly restriction similar to Maki Zenin. Later in the scene, Yuji passes Megami in a hurry because he realized it's already 430. But when Megami turns around after feeling the cursed energy radiating from Yuji, he He's already extremely far away. Another student tells Megami that Yuji's able to perform the 50 meter dash in 3 seconds. Keep in mind that the fastest recorded time for a 50 meter dash I can find is about 5 seconds. Although these feats are eclipsed by Yuji's later impressive moments in the series, this speaks to Yuji's insane natural physical prowess without even using cursed energy. When we throw a Yuji who's able to use cursed energy into the mix, his strength is even more off the charts. Yuji is able to fight consistently at a grade 1 level, and he can contend with cursed spirits like Mahito and Hanami, two special grade rank cursed spirits. Spirits. His strikes are also compared by Eno to be at the same level as Nanami. On top of all that, Yuji is able to lift and throw things like cars to literal giant slabs of concrete. Yuji is also insanely durable. When Sakuna transfers vessels and incarnates inside of Megami's body, almost immediately he dashes at Yuji. He ends up punching Yuji so hard that the effect of the punch caused the back of Yuji's jacket to tear a massive hole where the entrance and exit wound from the punch would have been. But Yuji's body was so strong that he was able to take the punch and not get ripped apart. When it comes to raw strength, Yuji is one of the strongest we've seen. Yuji's ability to grow as a fighter mid-combat is also outstanding. During the Goodwill event, he's able to take a punch from Aototo, who remarks that despite Yuji's small stature, he's stronger than he is. And even though he doesn't use much cursed energy, his strikes are effective. During the same fight, Yuji throws a vertical jab leading from the left to counter Toto's horizontal strike. Toto says that that Yuji from a moment ago is completely different than the Yuji we see now. He's breaking down Toto and growing as a fighter. But when Yuji finds an opening to land divergent fist on Toto, Toto moves his head forward and stops the actively building momentum in Yuji's upcoming strike. He grabs Yuji's hand and tells him that that's not what he wants him to devour. He explains to Yuji that his divergent fist is the result of him not trying to flow his cursed energy in the proper way. He says that cursed energy flows from your stomach to your chest to your shoulders all the way down to your fists. Once Yuji understands this, he and Toto begin training and he properly learns how to control the flow of his cursed energy. Yuji after this is able to damage people as durable as Hanami, who's even more durable than Jogo. And his cursed energy manipulation becomes so refined, he's able to hit multiple black flashes. To reiterate how insane this actually is, Yuji, someone who didn't even know how to properly flow cursed energy, grew so far 
in only one day, he was able to land multiple black flashes. Although Yuji is extremely strong and gifted as a fighter, many believe he's getting left behind. In comparison to Maki, who Yuji has been compared to constantly for his physical strength since chapter 1, she awakened herself and grown in strength massively. Maki is someone who had gone from a stagnant waist to strength to a fighter equal to Toji Zenin through becoming fully realized. In chapter 215, Yuji and Maki both begin to fight Sakuna at the same time, but Maki doesn't go her fastest, probably fearing that Yuji can't keep up. After a while, Maki and Yuji are caught by Yurame using Frost Calm, and as Sakuna leaves and hops on Nue, Yuji breaks out the ice. But Sakuna doesn't see Yuji as a threat in the slightest, and basically just points and laughs at him. Sakuna says that throughout that entire fight, he was focusing most of his cursed energy on Maki, implying that Maki is a way bigger threat now than Yuji. Not to mention that there's an entire tier of relevant fighters that Yuji just can't keep up with. During his fight with Yuta, Yuji's able to hold his own for the time being. Yuji was able to dash away from Yuta, who thought that his initial strike would be enough to take out Yuji. And when Yuta tries to slice Yuji, he's able to dodge Yuta's sword strike. He's also able to knock Yuta back and contend with him for a short period of time while just using a standard knife. While this is all extremely impressive, aside from Yuta holding back against Yuji before Rika was even brought out, when we compare people like Oro who could land attacks like Thin Icebreaker on Yuta, or people like Ryu whose fully powered Granite Blast is enough to overpower Yuta's fully combined blast made with Rika, it gets even worse when we compare people like Akari, who has a multitude of statements and arguments for debatably being stronger than Yuta, and has an amazing domain expansion, or when we compare people who are comparable to Akari like Kashimo, who has a can't miss attack without the use of a domain expansion. Or how about people like Sakuna who don't even find Yuji a threat and point and laugh in his face? We suddenly have a community of people who Yuji can't compete with. So what's the main issue with Yuji then? What's he missing between the other competitors? Well, I don't think Yuji will achieve the strength he requires through Heavenly Restriction like Maki, I think the key point that's holding Yuji back is his near empty arsenal. As it stands now, most sorcerers possess a curse technique which play a major key factor in their strength. Curse techniques playing a major role in the strength of sorcerers overall is something that's been reinforced since the early points in the series. Gojo tells Yuji that curse techniques are intrinsic, and therefore Jujutsu Sorcerer's skill set is about 80% derived from their innate talent. Yuji not having a curse technique limits his skill set badly compared to other sorcerers. During the same conversation, Gojo says that one day Yuji's body will learn Sakuna's curse technique, but as it stands now, Yuji is no longer Sakuna's vessel, and if Yuji's body hasn't learned Sakuna's curse technique by now, he likely never will. The only other curse technique for Yuji to maybe acquire is his mother's gravity-based curse technique, but sadly I don't think this is likely to ever occur because of what we know from curse techniques they begin manifesting around the age of 5 or 6 and Yuji is way older than 6 years old. There are other pure fan theories that lead more into headcanon about Yuji unlocking possible curse techniques, like him mastering the black flash and being able to call upon the sparks of black at will, or Yuji having memory manipulation, but I really don't want to go into those. Even if we ignore the problem with Yuji not having a curse technique, the rest of his arsenal is still lacking. Yuji is missing a skill that most sorcerers around possess, barrier techniques. It's not even just domain expansion, Yuji doesn't even possess a simple domain or any anti-domain technique at all. While Kashimo, Hakari, Yuro, Yuda, Yorozu, Sukuna, and many more have at least counters to domain expansion, and if not their very own, even Maki has her own way around domain expansion as we see during her fight with Naoya. If Yuji was ever trapped in a domain expansion which holds a can't miss attack, he'd likely get absolutely destroyed. Aside from literally punching and kicking his opponents, the only thing that Yuji had going for him was that he was a vessel for Sukuna. Being a vessel for Sukuna has saved him many times in the past. For example, during his fight with Choso, Yuji is cut by piercing blood on more than one occasion, and if it wasn't for him being Sakuna's vessel, he might have died, because Sakuna being inside of Yuji gives him a resistance to all poisons, making piercing blood have no other side effect. Being Sakuna's vessel also made Mahito unable to use his idle transfiguration on Yuji out of fear of Sakuna retaliating and killing him. Also, because Yuji had Sakuna's soul dwelling inside of him, his body naturally learned how to perceive the contours of the soul. This allowed Yuji to be one of the only people to be able to damage Mahito. Most of these qualities like poison resistance, or Yuji's body being able to understand the soul are abilities that Yuji may or may not still have. I say maybe because mostly it's not fully confirmed yet that he's lost these qualities, and I wouldn't be surprised if Yuji's body naturally adapted to its current state when it was housing Sakuna, but that's purely headcanon. Kashimo, for example, while he has a curse technique he doesn't use, he makes up for it by optimizing his cursed energy. Kashimo's cursed energy bears a trait similar to electricity. When Kashimo punches his opponents, he splits the positive and negative energy from his electrified cursed energy charges, and when his punches connect, he transfers a positive charge to his opponent and keeps the negative. This allows him to hit his opponents with a can't miss attack without the use of domain expansion. I'm not saying Yuji requires a curse technique, but Kashimo is an example that without using a curse technique, you're going to need to develop other abilities to be one of the prominent fighters and contend with the best. Before we wrap up, I want to go over a theory that was brought up to me by one of my friends regarding Yuji already receiving some sort of power up. During his own fight with Sakuna, after Sakuna had taken over Megami's body, Yuji and Sakuna begin to brawl. When Yuji throws a giant block of cement at Sakuna, he's stunned and questions what this strength is. This is 
is odd because we know Sukuna can see through Yuji and he's taking control of Yuji's body on more than one occasion. Therefore, Sukuna should know just how strong Yuji is, but for some reason he doesn't. So it's either Sukuna wasn't paying that close attention when he was inside of Yuji or Yuji suddenly grew in power. Although from what we know about cursed energy, it's derived from negative emotion. Sorcerers train for that moment that they're brought on with heavy emotion, that way they'll effectively channel more cursed energy by controlling their emotions better. We actually see this happen to Yuji during his fight with the finger bearer in chapter 7. When Yuji is pushed up against the corner by the finger bearer for the first time, he's able to charge up a fist of cursed energy from the wave of negative emotion he just felt. Yuji also does something very similar during his fight with Choso. When he's pushed into a corner again, literally thinking he's gonna die, he begins to focus his fear into cursed energy and gains a new resolve. During this moment while fighting Sukuna, Yuji is visibly angry and overwhelmed with emotion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think this is a rhetorical question from Sukuna and it's not meant to be taken super seriously, or you think it's Yuji channeling more cursed energy or something totally different. If you enjoy Jujutsu Kaisen content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and comment on some video ideas you want to see be done in the near future and thank you for watching.